being the man in the arena, being the woman in the arena, is doing something that you enjoy. It's no use following somebody else's path. Constantly always learning, and then each aircraft you, learn, uh, you fly, you have to also learn the different okay. aircraft. Interesting fact though, your private pilot's license, you can do at the age of 17, which we all know drivers is 18, 18. which I find just still mind-blowing to me. I got my license at 17. You are just so mature for your age because aviation draws in the maturity, the, the mature people, you know. In life, success isn't linear. It is up and down, up and down. Right. Practicing the landings, which is the, the hardest part with a yes. fixed wing. I, I think helicopters are also the same. The landing mm. is the, the most tricky to learn. Okay. Just to enter to fly the Boeings, the Saf for Safair or Air Link to fly those aircraft, you need 1,500 hours. There's also different fields with helicopter you can go in from your medical sector mm -hmm. to your poaching, your game sector. Mm -hmm. You have to be passionate to get involved, otherwise yeah. it's, it's, it's going to come across in your work ethic, in your yes. diligence, in your, in your flying. Yeah. Hello everybody and welcome to another exciting episode of Man in the Arena. Now most of you, all of you know me as Dharmesh Dyer, being out there flying helicopters and climbing mountains and riding motorbikes and it's, it's, it's a wonderful hobby to have aviation. And the whole point of being man in the arena, in this case a woman in the arena, is to go out and try things. So many times you've looked up at the sky and seen a plane or a helicopter and you think to yourself, I'd love to learn how to fly. Or you've driven past your local airport and uh, you want to know what's involved in, in aviation. And some of us think it's so expensive and how do we actually get there? So today we've got uh, Dylan and we've got Lauren mm -hmm. and uh, they're going to explain to us a little bit about aviation. Dylan, tell us about yourself and yes, who firstly, are you? Thanks for having me on the podcast. Uh, so my name is Dylan. I'm one of the grade three flight instructors here at Board Aviation in East London. What's a grade three instructor? Everybody's like... So, so it's your initial, it's the junior instructor. Okay. So I can do the training, I mm -hmm. can't do testing, I can't test people okay. for a license. Uh, so I just do all the training. Okay. Uh, so as you get license. experience, you go from grade three to grade two to grade one, and then correct. So then you so for grade two, for argument's sake, it's two hundred hours to get your upgrade to, be, to become a grade two instructor, mm -hmm. which then I can teach people as a grade two to how to fly uh, on instruments and fly okay. in the clouds and that kind okay. of thing. And then you get a grade one, which is a designated flight examiner. Okay, so you're a grade three, grade and three. yeah. Where you're at BAC? At, at Border Aviation, a uh, flight school in East London. And I'm also a first officer at East London Air Service on a King Air 100. Okay. Uh, so, a okay. little bit of both. Yeah. <laughs> Lauren? Hi, um, Lauren Francis. And I was a pilot, helicopter. Look at that, she was a helicopter yes, pilot. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I haven't flown in about six years, but yes. But helicopter. you enjoyed the experience of. Loved, loved it. Yes. Yeah. From meeting different people along the way during my training all the way to the the work i had flying i used mm -hmm. to fly for a company in pe and we done car tracking oh. in amtata Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so you were busy 24 7. <laughs> yes 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 and that flying is, is very interesting amtata being the hub of carjackings mm -hmm. and a whole lot of going on there so it gets very intense okay okay yeah. and there's mountains on each side around yes. there and yes you're doing quite a bit of flying yeah trying to chase cars and track people and all of those that go with it so yeah yeah it was fun what brought you into this thing was it i, I remember when i was a kid i used to watch this great show called airwolf and i actually oh. thought okay now i want to become a pilot so it actually drove <laughs> me a tv show drove me to my career. How did you get involved? Uh, so it was actually, I was, it wasn't that kind of story for me. <laughs> I wanted to be a, a chartered accountant. Oh, a chartered accountant. I yeah, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, and then I'd, yeah, I had no plans. I was uh, 17 in yeah. 2017. And um, then my parents, she worked, my mom worked for Damlin and mm. she got a guy who wanted to advertise aviation. And long story short, I went to uh, Wings Park. I don't know if yes, you're familiar yep. with Wings, Wings Park. Park. Yeah. And I went in a sling with a guy, a little intro flight towards aviation. And uh, once we get, got airborne, I was like, this is what I want to do. Something <laughs> different, completely different, not like sitting in an office yeah. flying. And uh, since then, 
my to my parents despair, despair <laughs> uh, when it comes to uh, finance a yeah. little bit. Um, and then I, yeah, I got my pilot's license. Then I went to commercial, to instructing. Yeah. Now to chartering and medical flights, cargo, and all that kind of stuff. So. So so I don't think we're going to see back. you sitting as a chartered accountant somewhere. No. Not no. that there's anything wrong <laughs> with being a chartered accountant because they could probably buy their own planes. Yes. But this is what you enjoy. This is what I enjoyed. Yeah, and uh, yeah, six years of flying now and uh, yeah. don't look yeah. back. Yeah. So that's one of the things we always talk about is being the man in the arena, being the woman in the arena is doing something that you enjoy. It's no use following somebody else's path. And then Lauren, how did you end up in the cockpit of a Robinson? So that story is interesting. In my grade seven yearbook, they asked you what you want to be mm -hmm. when you grow up. And... I happened to put the helicopter pilot. Yeah. As life went on, your studies go on, I forgot about it. When I finished my trick, the opportunity was there. There was a, I think it was still like application within or I added in the paper. And my father says, well, go for it. You have mm -hmm. nothing to lose. And universities hadn't gotten back to me then. And so I was like, okay, you have nothing to lose, apply. They gave, they gave um, feedback almost within that day. So I'm like, take it or leave it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yes, take it. <laughs> Taking it. Um, the intake started, I missed the January intake. I went into February intake at 43 Air School. And yes, and helicopter it was as well. Like I got there and I was like, okay, everything on helicopter, helicopter. And I got I'm like, oh, there's planes as well. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what, looking at how many people were there doing plane, fixed wing, and how many people doing helicopter, I don't look back. Like, yes, it could have been cheaper, would have been cheaper, yeah, would have yeah, been. No. Also, you would be open, you would be like, you would be, yeah, exposed to more flying. But helicopter was like, this is, this is it. Yes, yeah, yeah, like, this yeah. is it. And you walk around base there, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. But just so that everybody knows, <laughs> Helicopter. I fly helicopters. They are incredibly expensive to operate. So, ladies, if you're dating a man, he has a Ferrari. That's great. He has a plane. That's great. But if he's got a helicopter, that's a different story altogether. You know. <laughs> so now, somebody's watching this. They want to become a pilot, a helicopter, or a fixed wing, and uh, you got to start somewhere. Um, you got a medical. Yeah. Talk to us about a medical. Okay, so before the medical, firstly, what I always suggest to the, the new students that's come to board aviation is just do an intro flight. Mm -hmm. um, flying is not for everyone, yeah. um, so definitely get the experience of flight and see if it's for you. If you love it, then you're going to make mm -hmm. a plan to get it done. Yeah. Um, but as Dharmesh has said, uh, the medical is something that you have to be medically fit to fly, uh, which there's different classes, mm -hmm. which is like kind of uh, strictness of the medical and for just a PPO, a private pilot's license, or for helicopter, um, you've got to do a class two medical, which the, in East London, there's only two people, which the one has now left, mm -hmm. is we have Dr. Watson still in East London. Yeah. Uh, we've got Dr. Wood in Port Alfred, mm -hmm. and you do a class medical, and he determines if you are fit to fly. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. if you're not fit to fly, uh, fit to fly then you, you can't fly, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, but a lot of things, uh, a lot of people don't understand um, color blindness is actually, a certain degree of color blindness is, mm -hmm. Uh, you can't fly then because there's certain lights you've got to look at. Um, yeah, it's obviously, kind of I mean, the red light is flashing, but if you don't know what a red if light is, you don't know if it's the red, red light, then yeah, it's yeah. a problem. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, and then Lauren, you get your medical, you've done your uh, uh, intro flight. Um, it's expensive, but would you recommend somebody flies full time if they can afford it, or is that the best way to do it? There is a lot of ways to do it. I think for me, looking at the industry now and if i had to get back into it whatever your budget can allow mm -hmm. of course you don't want to leave the flying for too long mm -hmm. otherwise you're just going to be recapping 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 right, the whole yeah. time when you want to you get to a stage where you have to keep it constant and it's time spaces within it mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. as short as possible not to lose that knowledge right. so whatever your budget can yeah. allow <laughs> yeah. so, so so if you fly two hours a week that should be fine. That should be um, fine for, for training purposes. Mm. Once you get to that stage, as um, you mentioned, Lauren, um, when you get to that stage where you're going solo, you mm. need to fly almost every second day mm. Uh, mm. to keep your, your currency up. Otherwise, you will, it will cost you more money to yeah. recap on recap, exercises. Recap. Yeah. Okay. And how many hours do you need? Do you, I mean, can you, just, can you become a pilot in a week? 
Uh, no, so yeah. we've actually at Border Aviation, our quickest guy was uh, three months. Mm. Quite an interesting character. He came yeah. from Botswana. Yeah. He has, uh, I don't know if you know Sergo. No. And Botswana, he has a pet lion that he looks after. Oh, he has a oh, pet wow. lion. And he came for three months and he got his license in the quickest amount of time. Did he bring the months. lion with? No, he didn't. Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he um, was, yeah, that's, that was our quickest guy I did in three months. There are cases where people can do it quicker, mm. uh, but I would say on average it's about a year. Um, okay. I yeah. did it in matric uh, when, while I was still in school. I yeah. did it in one year. Okay. So, uh, the, whole, the, so. the point is, this is it's, it's, it's not a race. You don't want to finish no. as quickly as possible. No. You want to you be a proficient aviator when you walk. You want to be safe so you can go with your friends, you can fly, yeah. you can take your, you, you make it a career. Correct. No, yeah. exactly. And, and sometimes it will take some people a little bit longer to grasp mm -hmm. a certain exercise and put it into yeah. practice. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely don't try and compare yourself to someone else. Yeah. Um, yeah. You won't, yeah. there'll always be someone mm -hmm. who does it quicker than yeah. you or longer than you. Mm. And then Lauren, there's a, there's a, there's a big difference. If you, if you get a, a plane license, you can't just automatically go and fly a helicopter. It's no. completely different. Completely is it? different. No offense, but helicopter people work a little bit harder. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they do. They do. They do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, there, there, there isn't. I would say you are credited half the hours or a portion of Correct. the hours, so you can go from the one to the other mm -hmm. and vice versa. It's just it all depends on what you want to yeah. do. You know, I always um, had the impression of being a helicopter pilot is. You almost wear the helicopter. You think yeah. it and it happens. Whereas a plane, if you let go of the controls, which you don't want to do, but yeah. it sort of flies like a bird. It, it, it does. It's what designed it to, to fly. Yeah. With well, a helicopter, it's a million parts all moving together that's trying to destroy itself. You know? <laughs> so now, how many hours do you need? to become a pilot? Uh, so for, you get a different level. So mm -hmm. private pilot's license is for me to take you guys flying just for fun. Yeah. Um, but you can't make money off it. I can't make money yeah. off it. Even if you give me a Coke, it's, that's kind yeah. of a reward. Yeah. You okay. can't make rewards. Uh, it's 45 hours minimum, mm. of which 15 hours is on your own. You have mm. to do on your own. That's called solo. And that's called solo, yeah. correct. And that solo is broken down into different components, mm. which is five hours cross-country solo. Mm. So for argument's sake, at Border uh, Aviation, we fly to Queenstown, to Grahamstown and back mm. on our own. We have okay. to do that on our own. Mm -hmm. And then you might do Statham, Kumcha and back on your mm. own as well. So that gets you the five mm -hmm. hours. Then you also get three hours solo in the circuit, which is, we talk about the circuit. It's a pattern, a race uh, course pattern, yeah. which is over the East London Airport, and or now King pa Palo mm -hmm. Airport, uh, which we still call the Tower East London Tower. Yeah. I don't think they'll ever change. <laughs> it's like Port Elizabeth is Kopecha, yeah. and uh, we say PE Tower or Port yeah. Elizabeth Tower. Yeah. Okay. Um, we do three hours of circuits or uh, three hours of circuits, which is just landings, practicing your landings, and then seven hours flying mm. in the general flying area. But the circuit for both helicopter and planes, it compromises or comp it, it comprises everything. It's the takeoff, the uh, the Transition, the yeah. turn, the downwind, the, turn, the base. Downwind. So you're practicing pretty much all the skills that you would need barring navigation. Correct. So you, you do exercise uh, 4 to 13, which is learning how the controls work to mm. turning, to climbing, to descending, mm. learning how to do that, mm. mastering it, and then you go into the circuit, mm. practicing the landings, which is the, the hardest part with a yes. fixed wing. I, I think helicopters are also the same. The landing mm. is yes. the, the most tricky to learn okay. the skill. So then you get... But that 50 hours, that's the minimum. It doesn't mean that you get to 50 hours that Correct. you get your pilot so license. So what I'm seeing now currently at, in East London, not uh, just on the average student, it's about maybe instead of 45 hours, it's about 60 hours, 65 mm -hmm. hours. Um, it's just uh, we've had people also 100 hours. Mm -hmm. uh, some people just take a bit longer to cross the skills. Mm -hmm. And Lauren, you also 50 hours? It would be the same. It would yes, be the same. everything, your circuit as well, the way you fly the circuit will be the same as what fixed mm -hmm. wing will be. Okay. Yeah. So now you've got your... PPL, your private pilot's license. Uh, you can either choose to remain a PPL, fly a couple of hours a month with your friends, not to make money, not, not to get to reward. Money, yeah. What would the next step be? So the next step would be normally what we have guys do is get a NART rating. So that's an add-on onto your license mm -hmm. for you to legally fly at NART as the pilot in command. Okay. And then night rating, then you get an instrument rating. Correct. So mm. night rating is just flying for night, which the night time is defined as 15 minutes after sunset to mm. 15 minutes before sunrise. Mm -hmm. And that's for you to legally fly at night. The instrument rating is could be day or night, uh, flying on instruments only. Mm. So solely reference inside the aircraft yeah. and not outside. So flying in clouds, for argument's sake. Yeah. You don't know where what up and down is. So you're flying just on the instruments. And it, that's 40 hours flying on instruments. But that's intense. You, I mean, that, 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 that is, is intense. Yeah. Um, and yeah. also, I mean, humans aren't meant to fly. We're not meant to fly. <laughs> yeah. you know, um, God didn't design us to fly. Um, but when it comes to your orientation, your body will tell you something and 
it's saying maybe you're in a turn, but you might mm, be mm. straight and level. And learning to rely on the instruments and, and fully trust the yeah. instruments is a, a big learning curve. I mean, yeah. we've been trusting ourselves, our body, our senses yeah, yeah. forever, yeah. and now you have to rely yeah. just on the instruments. Yeah. Is quite so, so you get your PPL, and then you get your night rating, your instrument rating. Everybody thinks it's fun and games, and it's Top Gun, and you're doing all yeah. this. But there's a, Lauren, there's a lot of studying involved, eh? Yes. It's quite a bit. Yeah. So with your PPL, you have to do quite a few exams, as well as your nitrating, you also have to do an exam. Mm. Instruments, Instrument rating, you know, yeah. exam, all the way to commercial yeah. so exam. When we say <laughs> a lot of work and a lot of studying, uh, you've got navigation, you've got MET, yeah. you've got yeah. human performance, you've got air law. There's a whole flight list. Flight planning. Yeah. Flight planning. There's a whole flight lot planning. of things. That, and then do you have to go up to Johannesburg to the CAA to write it or you write uh, it here? Actually, at Border Aviation, we are an online examination center. Mm. I'm actually one of the invigilators. Okay. Uh, so I would watch you on a camera making sure you mm. guys don't cheat or well, people cheat. Um, <laughs> it's very controlled. Yeah. 75% um, is the pass mark at mm. the moment. Uh, we don't want pilots that don't know what they're doing, mm, flying mm, a plane mm. with people's lives yeah. in their hands. Yeah. Uh, so it's quite a high percentage. Yeah. Uh, it's all multiple choice, which people think is easier. It's, it's not. Mm -hmm. The way they design the questions, they make two questions correct. Yeah. Uh, it's also not pilots making the questions. So it's kind of sometimes worded incorrectly or there's two answers correct. And yes. now you have to choose the more correct yeah. one. Yeah. So yeah. it just makes it so, a little more challenging. Yeah, this is not a lower grade, higher grade, 33 no. and a third percent <laughs> scenario. No, no, 75 you're, you're, percent, yeah. <laughs> so, You've got your, your PPL, your instrument rating, and your night rating. What's next? Normally with the instrument rating, you do the training, and then when you do your commercial license, which is now you can get reward or get paid mm -hmm. to fly people around, um, is the hours. You talked about the hours. Mm -hmm. um, it's 200 hours minimum to get your commercial pilot's license, okay. of which people normally go about 220, 250 maybe, depending. At 43 Air School, they actually have an integrated course where they do it in, I think, 175 hours something or something like yeah. that, a little yeah. bit less, uh, 150 hours could be even. Mm -hmm. um, but there's always risks and rewards. Yeah. Sometimes accelerated courses, if you don't meet that, that kind of requirements yeah. or the pace, they, then you can fall out of yes, place. Okay, um, okay. But with, uh, for all the flight schools with us, it's 200 hours minimum, of which you need certain amounts, instrument mm. time, night time, Mm -hmm. uh, also exams, there's another eight exams, give or take, you have to do yes. for the commercial license. Yeah, I wrote those exams and those are... They're even more trickier. Yeah. So you've got your yes. private pass license, your commercial is way harder. And mm -hmm. the ATP, which is the airline license, pilot mm -hmm. license, there's more exams. Yeah. So you're constantly always mm -hmm. learning. And then each aircraft you, learn, uh, you fly, you have to also learn the different okay. aircraft. Yeah, that's an interesting point. So, Lauren, so if you, equivalently, you learn to fly on the R-22. Robinson 22, one of the best-selling helicopters in the world. Um, now, if you want to fly a jet ranger, you have to do a conversion course. It's, it's, it's not, it, it's equivalent in the automotive world is you've got your driver's license on a BMW. If you want to go drive a Mercedes-Benz, you've got to do a conversion no. course right. to learn how a Mercedes-Benz work. Yes. And then you do your instructor rating. That's Correct. what you are yes. at the moment. You're so, an instructor. so for you to do your instructor's rating, you first have to have a commercial yep, license. Obviously. Yeah. Uh, and then it's kind of adding on to the license instructor uh, rating, which mm. is 80 hours of giving lectures to another instructor, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. a senior instructor. So he knows if you're telling him the incorrect information. <laughs> yeah. So you have to learn to build a lecture and how you're going to present it to mm -hmm. a student. And he will pretend to be the student. And you'll ask you questions that you have to answer. Yeah. Um, and then you also do 20 hours flying in the right seat. So it's kind of different to a car. We don't... Uh, well, actually, a helicopter is the opposite, but it's yeah. like a car. You fly in the right seat, yeah. where it's we as fixed-wing pilots fly in the left yeah. seat. Okay. So just to confirm, we're talking about PIC, the pilot in, in, pilot command, in command, and a plane sits on the left-hand seat. On the left-hand seat, in a fixed-wing In a fixed-wing, and in a helicopter, we oh, sit no. on the right-hand right seat. seat. I don't know why they yeah. designed it that way. I don't know if you can give me some insight. I actually also don't yeah. know. I, I, it's just I think different. it's the torque of the aircraft uh, in, a, in a plane. It's yeah. easier during World War One, they figured out it because of the way the engines were turning the aircraft, it would be Correct. easier to go uh, yeah, exactly. on, on the left. And this is why um, it's most planes, oh, in fact, all planes are left-hand side because when you board a plane, you board from the left-hand side. Correct. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, but with a helicopter, it's, you're in the right-hand right -hand seat. So now you've got your instructor rating because it looks like people get the instructor ratings as a way to build hours. And some of them actually, it's, it, they do it and they love it and they become instructors for life correct you know it's, it's uh, there's there's i have a lot of friends who are instructors actually at 43 air schools uh, a good mate of mine 
And um, yeah, what they're instructing you, so you're boarding hours for mm. the airline. So just to enter to fly the Boeings for Safair or Air Length to fly those aircraft, you need 1,500 mm -hmm. hours, which is very expensive to manually pay for all Absolutely, those hours. Yeah. So the, the cheapest way that people do uh, both the hours is by instructing. Mm, but mm. as you say, you get a, a kind of a, a calling and you actually love teaching the guys. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. actually learn so much by teaching than actually just flying the plane. Because um, you learn from other people's mm, mistakes mm, and mm. you kind of learn different aspects or scenarios. And it's, it's, it can be kind of yeah. sometimes dangerous because the guys don't know what could kill you or mm -hmm, what, what could mm -hmm. be dangerous, yeah. a maneuver. Um, but that's why the instructor's there to make sure you don't... You do it safely. You do it safely yeah, and yeah. you learn in a safe environment. Mm, mm. Um, so, yeah, it's quite a, interesting. Do you remember your first solo? I would never forget my first <laughs> solo. It was the 28th of March, 2017. Yeah. Uh, sorry, correction, 2018. And, um, yeah, when... So I did the, the circuits, practiced yeah. the, the landings with my instructor and suddenly he asked us to taxi back. And suddenly just said, listen, you're going to go fly one circuit on your own. You just got out. And yeah. uh, my face just went so red and kind of like, <laughs> okay, now today's the day. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, and then, yeah. So then I taxi to the, the run-ups, the, the run-up area, which we, we checked the engine that we're happy that we can take off. Yeah. And uh, kind of did a few extra breaths before <laughs> I, I lined up with the runway. And then you... you, you Go full you power yeah. and you take off way quicker because yes. you know the you're, other guy and they the don't weight, tell you that. They don't. They don't yeah. Your yeah. weight <laughs> makes a difference. Weight makes a huge yeah. difference. Yeah. So yeah. suddenly you know. I'm airborne way quicker than I, you, you know, know. Norm, yeah. I'm used to and I'm like, oh no, am I doing something wrong? <laughs> yeah. uh, and then you come around and now you have to land the plane. Now you kind of like everything goes back to training and yeah. You, yeah. you do exactly what you're told. You actually like think your instructor's there talking to you the yeah. whole time. Yeah. I spoke. And then you look there <laughs> and then not there. next to you. And you was how old were you at the time? I was 17. 17. I was 17. Yeah. So I actually did my pilot's license before my driver's. Yep, yeah. Interesting fact though, your private pilot's license, you can do at the age of 17, which we all know drivers is 18. 18. Which I find just still mind-blowing yeah, yeah. to me that yeah. they can literally do that. Before it, uh, yeah. I just think that a 16, 17 year old kid, I got my license at 17, you are just so mature for your age because aviation draws in the maturity, the, the mature people, you know? Yeah. We actually have quite a, a few youngsters because we have, uh, you can actually learn to, to fly at the age of 15 mm -hmm. and go solo at the age of 16 mm -hmm. and then get your license at 17. Yeah. Yeah. But what I, do, I have been seeing as an instructor is some people are a little bit still immature mm -hmm. to, to fly on their own and, yeah. and kind of have that uh, maturity. Yeah. Um, so that's why when we do have some of these youngsters, it's a good thing to start. The earlier you mm -hmm. do start, the better and you learn a lot. But sometimes it is better maybe wait until you're after school, yeah, uh, after yeah. you're 18, and then start. And then, yeah. um, Because it could cost you more. Or you're just not mature yet for mm -hmm. where you, you need, you need to, to be. be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, Lauren, first time you took that chopper out for a spin? Like I said, they don't tell you that a weight makes <laughs> a big difference. <laughs> and me being light and small, my instructor was a bigger guy. Yeah. And all, all else well, we, we do a few flights, we land. He says, you're going to go solo now, and he jumps out. And I'm like, oh, this is, this is it. This is it. This, <laughs> this is, is there. there. So I'm like, OK. Like you say, you talk to yourself just to mm. give you, settle your mind, your heart, you know, getting sure everything is, is, is OK. And you're like, we're going to do this. This is, this, is, this is it. So you get yourself positioned. You get comfy again, just so you know you can do this. And with helicopter, you go into a hover. And I'm everywhere. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> great. <laughs> and it feels lighter. And I'm like, oh, this, this is the weight gives you that, that stability. Yes, yeah. yeah. And you're like, you must get used to this. And I'm thinking, yeah, I can't do this. No, I can do this. No, you can't do this. No, you can do this. <laughs> you're hovering in your mind. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. So then you go for the, so you go, you go do your, your circuit. And you come back and you try and land and it feels different, but you need to do it because you have people watching you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're like making sure, like, listen, I'm watching you do this. You can do this. So you can't disappoint them. You, ha no, you, you have to you do gotta, this. You gotta do it. And, <laughs> and you, you have to do it with the expression around, yeah. and a facial thing that, no, I've yeah. got this. Yeah. Yeah. But back at home, you're thinking, I don't have to But But that like, um, reality of you actually flying a helicopter or plane on your own yeah. doesn't hit you until you actually go home and a few hours later, yeah. you're like, yeah. Yeah. I, actually, I yeah. actually did it. Yeah. You know? I remember so. when I did my first solo, I mean, this was in 1994, I'm giving away my age. So you, we had to do three circuits while the instructor just sat there, watched you, yeah. didn't do anything. Doesn't do did, anything. Then uh, he said, okay, you're ready. Uh, he told the tower, this was at Rand Airport outside Germiston, we've got a solar pilot, uh, 
go easy on him. He got out and he put, uh, I think, a 20, must be a 10 or 20 uh, bar weight in the aircraft. And as I took off in a helicopter, you've got the collective. I pulled it up and the weight balance was different. It's like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> okay. And then I did a circuit. And I remember as I was doing the circuit, as I was taking off, I said to myself, fuck, I'm flying. I'm <laughs> flying. I'm, I'm doing this. I'm 17 years old. I'm flying. And then we did a, I was supposed to do a downwind check. Completely forgot. I, I did it. I did it, but it wasn't. And then when I landed, because I didn't have the passenger, uh, the extra weight, I overshot the landing, which means I went further down. And I eventually, I did land on the grass. And uh, he came up to me and he said, how are you? Do you want to do another one? I said, yeah, yeah, I'm good, good. But obviously all of his years as an instructor said, let's take it easy. And um, in a helicopter, you fly with the cyclic and you use your right hand. So I'm flying and um, he said to me, raise your hand when we got back into the, stu in, in, into the hangar. And when I'm flying, I'm steady as a rock. But when he asked me in, in the hangar to raise my hand, I raised and it was shaking. <laughs> I, was in, I was in complete and utter shock. And you're right, that feeling of being able to fly on your own at 17, yeah, that's, when, that's when the real training starts. That's when you go yeah. out and you do your nav and you do all of this and you build up your experience. And look, there are days where... And your confidence. Confidence, but there were days when I, I flew and I was terrible. Everything, it's like, yeah. and yeah, then yeah, the next yeah. day you ba you back. It's success isn't in life. Success isn't linear. It is up and down, up and down, right, yeah. and you then the studying starts and everything. Okay, so now you've got the solo, you've got your instructor rating, your instrument ratings. Do you just go to an airline and say, here's my CV, or how, uh, how does I mean, it work? You, so normally you would have to apply. So mm -hmm. firstly, you make sure you have a CV. Yeah. That's step one. Um, and then you, you apply to the airlines. Eventually, they might call you for an interview. If that goes well, a lot of the airlines do a psychometric test mm -hmm. to make sure you have the correct, correct mindset mm -hmm. and team player or depending what they want. Mm -hmm. uh, do they want a strong person, a little bit taking orders, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, also making sure you're not endangering other people, mm -hmm. making sure you're a stable person. Not a psycho. Uh, not a psycho, <laughs> yeah, yes. You don't want psychos in, the, in, the, in the cockpit. <laughs> Um, and then if that goes well and they're all happy, then they put yeah. you in the simulator, make sure you can yeah. fly. Yeah. I mean, you said in your logbook is where you put all your hours yeah. for flying. They check the logbook. Okay, well, I want to see you now fly. Mm -hmm. You know, you could have all this experience, but you not, might not be able to fly. Yeah. Uh, so they put you in the simulator, yeah. put a uh, few scenarios, emergencies, seeing what you would do in certain uh, circumstances. Mm -hmm. And if they're happy, then you're starting the training onto their aircraft. In yeah. a bigger because obviously you're going to be flying Boeings and Airbuses and correct, big which, which you've never flown yeah, before. Yeah. So they can't just test you on stuff that you haven't done. Mm, they have to mm. test you on stuff you have done. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's quite an interesting. And then the simulators are absolutely amazing these days. If you were to wake up in the middle of the night in a simulator, you would think you're in the machine. Correct. The the simulator actually moves. Mm -hmm. It's got crazy technology and amounts. Uh, you know, it's like millions of rand to make the simulator as realistic mm, as possible. Mm. I mean, they can put a bird strike, they can, can do, do everything. anything that you want. Yeah. Um, you actually feel it's all, if, if you had to fly the simulator and you can land it and you go in a big plane, it's exactly mm, the same mm, thing. Mm, mm, mm. The sensitivity, also the, the, sensitivity the visual cues, the, the smaller, um, so when I did the instrument rating, we also, you can do on a sim, but it's not the realistic sims. Mm, so it's mm. more like standing still, and, yes. but you can see the visual yeah. cues and the instruments do what they need to do. And um, it's so sensitive. I don't know if you've ever been in a simulator. They're very yeah. sensitive. Yeah. It's not like the yeah. actual plane. So helicopter, um, us helicopter pilots, really do we get our instrument rating? Yes, I would say it's not one that it's... Because we normally fire with visual. Yeah, visual so, means you can see the ground. Yes. And, yeah. you know, and what's around you. But obviously, if you go into uh, aviation medical, you, would need you know, to if, if you have an accident, you can't say, I can't come and rescue you now because it's raining. You've got to be able to fly <laughs> yes. all the time. Right. It's not one that we often get, mm -hmm. but there is, mm -hmm. depending mm -hmm. on what your job requires you. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then do you get an AT, ATPL is H, now... So the, now is the, the top, um, but every license you've got to keep valid for, like every year you go mm -hmm. for another test uh, when it comes to the commercial rating or ATP. Pilot's license could be every two years, mm -hmm. um, and, but initially every year and then two years after that. And then do you do your medical as well every couple Correct. of years? Correct. So yeah. your class two medical could be valid for five years. When mm -hmm. you, now, if I want to get a, a, a commercial license, I need a class one medical, which is even more strict mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to your blood pressure, your, um, your hearing, your mm -hmm. eyesight, that kind of stuff. And um, then it's every year. Mm. Once you go past 40 years old, it could go, depending what operations you're flying or what kind of flying mm -hmm. you're doing, it goes to every six months. Okay. Um, okay. So don't worry, your pilots are like checked often. Often, um, yeah. And from what I've gathered, if 
for some reason you don't pass a medical, it's not the end of the world. You can appeal and they could have Correct. specialist doctors. I'm, for those of you who don't know, uh, in South Africa we have the CAA, the Civil Aviation Authority. They overlook everything to do with aviation, whether you're flying a, a small little plane or a helicopter, a hot air balloon or a commercial pilot. Everything around aviation is with the CAA, it's our which, government, is, yeah. which yeah. is under the Department of Transport. Correct. Okay. Speaking about Department of Transport, uh, there are bursaries out there, there are programs out there. So Correct. if you if you're looking at a plane and you've always wanted to fly, and you think to yourself, "Oh my goodness, it's so expensive," you can. There, there are options out there. Correct. Yes. And, and as we mentioned earlier, I mean, you don't have to pay it all up front. Mm. Um, the beauty of border aviation uh, in East London is you pay as you go. Mm. So if you mm. want to fly, then you just put a little bit in and you fly. Uh, and then you just go as you go, as you pay as you go. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. as we said, it, it does make it more expensive yeah. if you're flying and you're stopping and you're flying and yeah. you're stopping just because you have to grasp those mm -hmm. skills again. Yeah. Um, so it is yeah. one of those things. And then, so. Lauren, look, you, you become a commercial helicopter pilot, but there's a lot of work in Africa we see for game capture yes. and uh, flying guys out to the oil rig. So the, the commercial helicopter pilot's life is infinitely more different than a, than a fixed wing. Uh, a pilot. Yes. So like you were saying, there's also different fields with helicopter you can go in from your medical sector mm -hmm. to your poaching, your game sector. Mm -hmm. um, normal power line winches, yeah. you mm. can do that. Also um, fire and yeah. Yes. Yeah. So and there's a whole broad scope. There is you know. quite a bit. The nice thing I like about flying helicopters is that uh, if you see a nice restaurant like on the beachfront here in East London, whoop, you, can, you can land there. You can, but you would require permission of, of as course, well. Of course, I mean, you can't yeah. just land in everybody's backyard. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we can't do that in fixed yeah, wing. Yeah, we have yeah. a, need a runway a certain yeah, distance. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. and then everybody says, well, what happens if the engine fails in the plane? What do you do? So engine fa uh, failure in the plane, firstly, don't stress, don't yeah, panic. Yeah. Um, so you're taught how to handle that kind of situation. Um, you would just put yourself into a gliding attitude mm. and the aircraft will descend. So um, when you say so attitude, it's not in your head. It's no, not your head. Is uh, so the, we the talk about the, the nose attitude of the aircraft yeah. in relation to the horizon yeah. and you will lower the nose a little yeah. bit. So normally we have a forward center of gravity, mm -hmm. which because the engine is very heavy in the fixed wing aircraft. Mm. So if you did nothing, the aircraft already starts oh, lowering the nose, yeah. which then you'll keep a certain speed. Mm -hmm. And um, you most aircraft are in uh, for training purposes are 10 to 1 ratio so for every meter you're going down you're mm -hmm. going about 10 meters oh, horizontally okay. yeah. so you can glide quite a far distance yeah. i mean if you're a kilometer up you're going to go 10 kilometers okay for that's far that's, 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 that's pretty that's, far yeah, yeah. so a lot of people think no it's just going to descend like a rock i yeah. think a helicopter yeah, uh, yeah. from my we, we, perspective is a little bit worse for gliding <laughs> yes yeah. our gliding ratio is not as good as what yeah, yours correct. is yeah. but we still glide yeah. Well, yeah. great difficulty. I mean, yeah, we, I mean, our gliding ratio for a helicopter is that of a man manhole. You know, just, yeah. Yeah. But, it's, but the thing about a helicopter is with an engine failure, you can land right below you. You can yes. come down and we come down. We can maneuver quite a bit within yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, do you practice this with your students all the time? Is Cor it correct. So it's, as before they go solo, we, we um, practice. So we don't actually switch off the engine. We yeah. just bring the power back so you don't have any power going mm -hmm. out of the, the engine or thrust. So you simulate it. So we simulate mm -hmm. it. So we just bring the power back and then, okay, we have an engine failure. Yeah. What are you going to do? Okay, you're going to turn towards the runway, yeah. land there, make sure we that's done. Mm -hmm. And then when we go to the general flying area towards Sinsa in, in the Eastern Cape up the, the coast, then we'll also simulate engine failures mm -hmm. and they have to now, you don't have a runway around yeah, you, you have to yeah. now choose a field or find a, mm -hmm. like the beach maybe, yeah. which there are, as you know, safety concerns, mm -hmm. landing on the mm -hmm. beach, soft sand, it could flip yes. the plane upside down. Mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. we practice those uh, scenarios, scenarios a lot yes. to make sure that yeah. student, if that happened, they can yeah. handle it. But when you do a simulated engine failure, do you actually go onto the, onto the runway? No. no. Uh, well, on the runway, correct? Uh, yeah. Yes, we do. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to the field, there's Obviously. A, a, a legal limit. We can't fly below 500 feet above mm. a ground level. I mean, you can imagine spectators on the ground yeah. somewhere and they see a plane coming right at them. We don't want to scare people. Okay. <laughs> so we go as, make it as um, realistic as possible, mm, mm. but within safety reasons. Uh, safety is number one in aviation. Okay. So. Then there's, there's a lot of money in this thing. I mean, we're not going to mention airlines or anything like that, <laughs> yeah. but. What sort of money can a pilot make? Um, uh, instructor, I mean, instructor, you, you don't do it for um, the money. Mm -hmm. it's, it's more for um, the hours. Yeah, um, so yeah. that's what you need. Um, so the, the amount of money you kind of getting with getting those hours that you're not paying for is a, a lot of money um, mm -hmm. in that kind of sense. But 
Yeah, instructing, I mean, you're looking at maybe at 20 to 10. It depends how busy okay. you are. Depen it depends also on the weather, because if the weather's terrible... Correct. You, so, unfortunately, uh, in, in East London, at the Eastern Cape, the weather, as you know, it's either very windy mm -hmm. or we have a lot of rain compared to Joburg or a few other places in interior where they have better weather mm -hmm. uh, six mm -hmm. days out of the seven days in yeah. a week. The problem, um, though, in, not the problem. One of the things of flying in Johannesburg is the, the air traffic is really piled on top of each other and they, you could, there could be a Boeing there, there could be an Airbus there and there could be your little... It's very busy. It's, it's a it's busy airspace. Very, it's, uh, yeah. busy airspace. What's quite nice about East London is it's busy but it's not so busy. Mm -hmm. We have air traffic control here, mm -hmm. we've got the tower which yeah. you, you practice the communications with yeah, and you have yeah. to obey the instruction. Yeah. But you also, um, you can't trust anyone in aviation. You actually have to make sure well, what they're telling you makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had a few cases where they told me to do something and if I did what they told me to do, yeah. I could have hit into another aircraft okay, okay. for argument's sake. So you've got to trust yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's not like one. the movies where you see uh, ATC tells them to do something and they do. If, if As a pilot, if it doesn't make sense, a ATC is there to guide you and to help you. They're not Correct. the overall boss. So a, a lot of students, when they're learning to fly, they're quite stressed to talk to the, the guys in the tower. Yeah. I mean, you just they're normal human beings. Yeah. They, they can they make understand. mistakes. We can make mistakes as pilots. Mm. And we just got to learn to communicate. And if something doesn't make sense, we need to clarify. Yeah. You mustn't be shy to ask them again. Ask them again. Mm. Confirm this. Or, yeah. you know, um, yeah, never, take, never assume anything in aviation. Correct. And, and if there's, you know there's no one, um, it's like when we fly to this um, general flying area, there's, we're not talking to the tower. We're talking Just explain to, to people out there, what is a general so, flying so area? So a general flying area, in, uh, if you go past Ganubi in East London, mm -hmm. so you're going flying to uh, uncontrolled airspace. Okay. Um, there's no tower, you're talking, communicating with other pilots. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, a lot of um, people think if you don't hear anyone, there's yeah, no, no one around. Mm. But you, you can't rely on that. Um, maybe they have a radio issue, or yeah. maybe they're just not talking on mm -hmm. the radio. Mm -hmm. So you've got to keep a good lookout mm -hmm. when you're flying and uh, make sure you don't fly into anyone. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's not like fl uh, driving a car when there's people always everywhere. Mm. Um, flying, is, you do have a sense of freedom. There's not a lot of people always yeah. around you. But So, when, Lauren, if you want to fly somewhere, Let's say you want to take the helicopter out and you want to fly to Grahamstown now to go have lunch. Do you just put fuel in it and fly off? Or is it as simple as that? Or If only it was. <laughs> <laughs> first, let, let's first find Grahamstown. Where it is, how are you going to get there? Yeah. Which route are you going to take? And like I said, going into a general airspace, you have mm. to keep telling everyone around you for those that are looking at coming into the area as well as going out of the area, mm. where you're at, how are you going to get there? Um, Grahamstown is close enough that we don't have to do a flight report, but I think it is just also to do one is, is good. Mm. It gives so, you the practice on one. So what, a flight report, just explain. Would you learn to explain it? See, the instructor. The instructor. <laughs> okay, well, I think you were going, Lauren, with the flight plan. The right? flight, flight plan, yeah. plan. So we, uh, as pilots, if we're flying from a control airspace to another control airspace, we want a flight plan. So we want people... Uh, to know what we're doing, what's our altitude, how how we're flying, yeah. to going from point A to point B, how long is it going to take us, how many people's on board the aircraft, uh, what's the aircraft's registration, so that's mm. kind of, um, so everyone knows, okay, that's the aircraft. So you, you fly from East London to Port Elizabeth, for example. So, so if I'm going from East London to Port Elizabeth, we need a flight plan. Okay. Because um, it's from a controlled tower to mm -hmm. another tower. Okay. If you're going from a tower to an uncontrolled area, you don't need one, mm. but then you're not going to have search and rescue. People, okay. if Your you safety. don't... Like, let's say you land and an hour later, no one's heard from you in a certain place. Mm. Then potentially people can now come and look for you. Yeah. Um, which you can imagine, that's very important if mm -hmm, you're flying mm. from in a vast area or open area mm -hmm. and something, maybe you had an engine failure and you had to land somewhere. Yeah. Now no one's coming for mm -hmm. you if you don't have a flight plan. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it takes you five minutes to make a flight plan. When, you do, when you're a student, it takes longer. Yeah. Uh, but when you like learn to you do it and you've done a lot, it, mm. it takes you five minutes for search and rescue. I mean, that's your life. Yeah. You yeah. Know? So then, uh, when you're doing this flight plan, you obviously need to look at the weather because the weather can determine whether, whether you, you go, go or not. Correct. So, so, I mean, if you have an instrument rating, mm. just, just because you have an instrument rating, uh, so you can fly in clouds, it's not a good idea. You can just do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to look, is there icing? Can, you, can your plane take icing? Mm -hmm. uh, in the Kingian, we can, but in the fixed training aircraft, we can't fly in, in icing conditions because mm -hmm. um, we don't have those boots which protect us against the ice. Okay. So, it's, yeah. it so all it's, depends. It's, it's not as simple as going to a petrol station, putting yeah. fuel in your car, and, and just driving somewhere. Because if you yeah. run out of petrol in your car, it's inconvenient. It might be dangerous where you, where you stop the car. 
but yeah. in a plane or a helicopter, that you is... You can't pull over. You can't pull over. <laughs> so, like, so also, you have to take into account uh, weight and balance. Mm -hmm. um, so it's the same as a helicopter. You have a certain maximum weight mm -hmm. in which um, they, they, the designers or mm -hmm. um, engineers said, this is your maximum weight mm -hmm. that you can take off under certain conditions. Uh, the hotter the day, the, the less dense there mm -hmm. is, um, which less performance. So you also have to look into that. In Gerber, compared to East London, which means more fuel, mm -hmm. uh, less efficiency, um, but when it comes to weight and balance, you also look at the sense of gravity. You have a limit where your weight's too forward or too mm. aft. And if it's out of the limits, you might not be able to control the aircraft, uh, which could lead you to a dangerous yeah. situation. So I've been on a couple of commercial flights, Boeings and Airbuses, where it was empty and they asked people to move around. So Correct. the balance of people on an aircraft it's, is, is it's important. It's, it's really important, yeah. especially if they... They're getting too slow. If they're flying too slow, we don't want we don't want weight mm. to the back in a, in a fixed wing aircraft. We want weight in the front. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we say lost an engine or both engines, uh, the aircraft will want to naturally go nose mm -hmm. forward. Uh, if it goes, uh, if our tail is heavy, the aircraft's nose is going to go up, and that's not a, a not nice a good situation. Position to no. be. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so I, I remember uh, flying um, overseas, and after they served dinner and drinks you get maybe 10 or 15 people now moving to the back of the aircraft to go to the, the bottom. <laughs> and, yeah. and then you can hear the machines working, changing the wings or doing something because people are moving on this aircraft all the time. So, Correct. you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with the big aircraft, it's, it's not as much of an issue compared to the small mm -hmm. aircraft that we uh, fly. Mm -hmm. um, but normally, yeah, you, as you, that noise that you hear, yeah. it's, it's the electrical trim. So mm -hmm. it's like a trim that stabilizes the aircraft. Yeah. So, a lot of people say that pilots that aren't flying, we kind of control the computers <laughs> yeah. uh, when it comes to fixed wing, not helicopter. Yeah. But uh, it is true to most of the part. But I mean, we're still monitoring the systems. Yeah. We do the takeoff. We do mostly land. There are cases where the weather's so bad that we can't land. Yeah. The aircraft can yeah. land. But it's all depending yeah. where you're landing and what systems yeah. you have on board and what systems okay. they have on the ground. Yeah. So how does, how does a commercial plane land here in East London when the weather is terrible. So when, when the weather is terrible and now you can't have visual cues outside, mm -hmm. you can't see the runway, mm -hmm. we have a, a guidance instrument landing system, ILS mm -hmm. is for short term, um, which guides us down. It's a, a, a path that tells us if we're flying too far to the left, or mm -hmm. it, it lines up with the runway. And it, we follow the, the path, which, mm. it's, which we call a glide slope, mm -hmm. and it'll tell us if we're high or low, and we want to keep on, the, on this path. Yeah. And it'll take us down to about 200 feet above the ground, which is quite low. Yeah. Um, and then once you, you go visual with the runway, let's say at 200 feet, that's where the cloud stopped. And at 200 feet, you see the runway, mm, mm. then you can land. And you've got about five seconds before you actually touch down. In the really? Yeah, 200 yeah. meters and you've got five seconds? Five yeah. seconds, I mean, or maybe 10 seconds mm. maximum. And uh, if you don't see the runway, we can't continue, mm, so then they go around. Go around. I'm mm. sure, I don't know if you guys have ever been in a SAFE or Airlink plane where they've actually gone around. Maybe mm, mm. not stable. Um, there's a lot of um, kind of criteria. Yeah. yeah, you have to fit, you have to be stable. Your, your stable rate of descent, stable speed. If you don't meet all of them, you have to do a go around. Yeah. And yeah. try again. Uh, um, and try again. Yeah. So people get upset. Sometimes they fly all the way from Johannesburg down to East London and they can't land in East London and then they have to go to PE or something. Correct. But it's about safety. It's about safety. I mean, there was a, a case recently. A guy took off from Cape Town. They went to Antarctica, which mm -hmm. was about, let's say, f uh, eight hours of flying time. They went all the way there and they couldn't get in there, couldn't land. <laughs> they had to fly all the way back to Cape yeah. Town. So that's 16 hours of flying yeah. um, and you yeah. know, they're back where they started, yeah. but it's all about yeah. safety. So just hitting on that point, so if you fly from Johannesburg to Cape Town, they don't put just the fuel for Johannesburg to Cape Town. There's always a Correct. top up in So case. in this case, um, when it came to Cape Town to Antarctica, they had to have enough fuel to go back to Cape yeah. Town. There's no way really else yeah. in, in Antarctica. Yeah. But yes, they, we have to have contingency uh, fuel or diversion fuel to so let's say for argument's sake i'm flying to cape town from east london mm. uh, if i can't make it into cape town we have to go to george yeah. we have to have enough fuel to go to mm. george uh, based on the circumstance a lot of people forget about the wind has a big effect on us mm -hmm. uh, if we have a strong headwind uh, our speed over the ground is much slower. So headwind, for those of you who don't understand, the wind is in it's, your face. It is in your face. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and so for argument's sake, I flew once from east london to um, to George, it took us four hours. Mm -hmm. Flying back, it took me two and a half hours. Because you had a, a Because I had a tailwind, because yeah. there was a cold front coming in. Yeah. So yeah. it really yeah. has a big effect on your flying yeah. time. And then... Which affects your fuel. Which, which affects it, your so fuel. So everything is interlinked of how you want to do this. Then Lauren, 
you speak Afrikaans. Can you speak Afrikaans on the tower? Do you tell? Can you can you talk Afrikaans? Or how? Yes, you could. You yeah. know, if if it comes down to if the person understands and you really can't and you need to clarify something, mm. I guess you yeah. could. But international standard is English. English. So English, you, right. you, well, that's one of the things you need to do is you need to be able to speak English yeah, you do proficiently. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we, sometimes for some students that aren't uh, first language is English, mm. then we do a proficiency. Uh, kind of check on them for so that they meet the requirements mm, uh, mm, to fly. Mm. There's a lot of uh, Chinese students that come to 43A school yes. and they do um, English language proficiency tests yeah. and, and checks and that kind of thing to get them yeah. up to speed. Yeah. And then speaking on the radio, can anybody speak on the radio or do you need to get another license or how does that work? Uh, so you would have to, so with a private pass license you need a restricted radio license. Mm -hmm. So yes, you would have to have a license, you can't just talk on the radio. Okay. Imagine uh, someone's in the, there was a case in America, a guy was in the bathtub with a radio and he was talking to the tower while there's a plane coming to land and he was talking, you know, on the radio. Yeah. You're not, it's you illegal. Can't do that. You yeah. can't do that. Yeah. You know? yeah. um, so you have to have a, a, a license mm -hmm. to, to be able to do it. And then when you go commercial, it's a general uh, radio license. Okay. And you get tested all the time. You get as tested. Well. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a, a certain people that can only test you. Um, you do a, a, exam. an exam, you do a course, and then you get yes. tested. Yeah. So everything is great when we're flying and everything's working, but now in our training, in your training, do they, do they concentrate on emergencies? Yes. No, mm. uh, we, I don't know about the helicopter, but I'm, I would imagine you guys also we practice a emergencies. lot of emergencies. So when, before we send someone solo, we have to practice certain emergencies, like mm. an engine failure, mm. or what happens if we have an electrical issue, what are you going to do? Mm. Mm. Uh, radio failure, what are you going to do? Mm. So that, mm. those kind of things we have to explain to the student, making sure they know what to do yeah. if those things happen. Mm. Mm. Um, so yeah, no, we, we definitely yeah. do practice a lot of emergencies. And it's obviously the same with us helicopter pilots. It's emergency training, training, training. So when it happens, it's You're almost prepared. like you don't even think about it. It just yeah. instinctively happens. Just you do yeah. exactly what you need to do. So now, not all personalities gel. You know, sometimes you just don't... <laughs> What happens if you're a, a, a student and you've started somewhere, but you find the instructor too tough on you, or you're not happy? I mean, can can you swap an instructor? Yes. How, how so does it I work? Keep, I always tell my students. I mean, um, not that I have anything wrong. If, if we don't gel, if you don't uh, find it's working, mm. you're not learning how efficiently, or mm. maybe the the teaching um, techniques are a little bit different to what mm. you need. Um, then the guy must go to another instructor. Mm -hmm. And you might, what I always tell people, if you're joining a flight school, maybe do one flight with John, one flight with Bob, and find who you prefer, yeah. and then make a decision. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a, lot, a big thing, the client. Yeah. You guys are the yeah. client, you must be happy. Mm -hmm. I also find, sorry to cut yeah. you short there, is that like you were saying earlier on, is that when you get a certain, to a certain training mark, you do a check. Yeah. with a different person in order to Correct. make sure that if you have a noticed that you're lacking on something that you, that you should will, know mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. then, it then, will be picked up so every 10 hours of uh, so I do the training for every 10 hours mm -hmm. um, after every 10 hours there's a senior guy that does the check on the, the student make sure uh, that he's at that level he should be yeah. if not then yeah. what what mm -hmm. what's we the weakness what's the strengths yeah. what do i need to focus yeah. on or maybe i've done something wrong i've taught him some bad habits and mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. someone else must uh, intervene and uh, sort out the habits yeah so you want to make the the journey as pleasant as possible but obviously there's going to be pressure i mean you're learning to Correct. fly something that's heavier and, well, than once heavier. you have a, a good life. instructor and you actually got that chemistry and you, it's professional and you guys mm. are are getting yeah. um, a lot of um, progress he might leave to the airlines because he bought the hours yeah. and I might leave. Um, so sometimes in your training, you might have not one instructor, you yeah, might have yeah. now eight mm. or six, <laughs> uh, which is not ideal either. Yeah. You don't want that many instructors, yeah. but it can happen, yeah. unfortunately. And you touched on the, um, about professionalism. I always said it doesn't matter if you're flying one person in a Robinson or 600 people in an Airbus, you're always professional. You have to be, you know. Yeah. No, 100%. You have to be on time. I mean, we it's can't be. Yeah. You've got to be on time. I mean, yeah. so Safi, I think, got the, the most on time airline yes, yes, at the yeah. moment. So yeah, that was yeah. fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, I mean, you, 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 what about car cargo pilots? We've always, we thought cargo pilot, cargo, ah, I can't even say that. <laughs> the cargo pilots are like the pirates. They just, I mean, yeah. I mean, is that a fair assessment or do they also fly professionally? Um, they, they, they also fly professionally. Um, with the cargo pilots, they mainly fly at night. Um, okay. I don't know, taking off from Port Elizabeth, I've seen them go to Joburg. Mm. Um, there's uh, places from Namibia. Um, oh, what is the... 
airline like DHL they mm -hmm. fly to Johannesburg okay. bringing small parcels yeah and that's kind of a scheduled every mm -hmm. night so those guys yeah. uh, pilots are uh, sleeping during the day and they work okay. at nights I mean that's just night hard. shift yeah night shift yeah, yeah. so, so the, the scope in the sector is huge even from a just a piloting point of view that's not even talking about air traffic controllers or, or ramp. aviation itself yeah, the, yeah. The, the, there's a huge market here and aviation is growing around the world no it is i mean so uh, as a, as we mentioned i mean you can be an instructor you can do medical flights mm. um, we do cargo as well i mean mm. you can you can go into a whole bunch of different things um, mm. Mm. you can do surveillance taking pictures mm. of mapping yeah. Uh, yeah. i mean uh, maritime search and rescue you can look for people in the, the ocean yeah. i mean yeah. i've had to do that once in port chepston um, so it's yeah. quite quite interesting yeah. any hair raising stories not not that we're going to scare anybody but what story would stand out and say wow uh, I had an issue with the engine once, mm -hmm. after, just after takeoff I had a coolant issue. Um, so if I flew for another five more minutes, the mm -hmm. engine would have uh, seized, it yeah. would have got too hot, too. I would have, it wouldn't have Buffering. been lubricating and cooling. Yeah. And uh, luckily I turned around, I just landed, yeah. I gave it to the, the maintenance guys to, to check it out. But if I carried on flying, yeah. I could have, yeah. um, you know, yeah. the engine would so have failed. <laughs> the number one rule if you have a problem in an aircraft whilst you're flying is fly the aircraft fly the aircraft yeah. so we, we talk about an acronym i taught my student this uh, this morning a a anc actually so that's, aviate, not, that's not the government <laughs> not the government not the government so anc is aviate fly the plane yeah navigate decide where you need to turn or, yeah. or how what's your plan of action and then communicate last yeah. i mean a lot of uh, young student pilots they if something happens, they kind of want to talk to the tower and ask them for something. Or, mm -hmm. Get yourself but safe. First. Get yourself, fly the plane. They're not in the plane with you. They, their life's not at, at stake. Yes. Um, aviation is very safe. Um, I mean, if you, the accidents, driving to the, the airport is more dangerous yeah. than actually flying the plane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, as we all know, it's, yeah. it's very yeah. safe, very regulated and controlled. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, fly the plane, navigate, communicate. So A and C. <laughs> yeah. Lauren, what about yourself? Any hair raising stories? There's, yes, there was one. Um, Flying in Amtata, December, um, got a call to a stolen vehicle, mm -hmm. so off we go, and um, SAPS was coming in, so police services were coming in, and I knew the guy, so we had a quick conversation, mm. catching up quickly, mm. how are you, how's things, you know, are you, yeah. are you coming in, perfect, okay, he was, at that stage he was leaving, and the guy next to me was doing the tracking, mm -hmm. and we see a vehicle. Yeah, you're flying now. You're we're flying. Yeah, yeah. We've, we found, okay, you can see that this, this vehicle is looking a bit suspicious, mm. dodgy, because <laughs> we would fly past it and then you'll see this thing take off. This vehicle's going into the bucky and it's going super fast and it's on a dirt road. And we're like, okay, this, why, why would you do this? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's not normal. And he says, no, I think, I think this is it. So I'm like, oh, okay, this is it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, with SAPS passing, he says, I said, must have called for backup because we don't have jurisdiction. When you say SAPS passing, is, is it, uh, in the helicopter. Oh, there's a, there's there's a helicopter. SAPS helicopter yes. around as well. And he says, okay, let's call for backup. So I say, listen, this is the situation. Can you assist? He says, yes. So they land. They literally see the guys jump out, suit up, position themselves, jump back in the helicopter. And we now flying next to each other. Yeah, yeah. And you can see now this bucky is going. It's going back roads into urban areas, back out again. And next minute there are bullets going and you're like, oh, bullets gracious. going. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so like Saps is shooting down. I'm trying to block, but also at a safe distance. Mm. I mean, you have to, it's low flying, so yeah. you're minding, you know, your wires yeah, and yeah. trees around you and towers as well. So, you know, I'm keeping a good following distance, but also blocking him off. So luckily okay. not shooting at me, but you know, Saps and them are doing their thing. Eventually the guy goes into town and lands in one of the malls. Saps lands, they go and do their thing. Um, the ground crew as well from the, the tracking company also go in and do their thing. And yeah, it was like you see in the movies. Yeah, it's like the movies. Like the movies. The movies. Yeah. yeah. And then Dylan, you mentioned you do the air rescue. What, what is that about? Yeah, so we once got a call out uh, for maritime search and rescue. There was mm. a, a, a sailor that fell off his boat um, about 50 k south of Port St. John's. Mm -hmm. um, so we, he was actually in the water for about 12 hours wow. uh, before we got sent and deployed the next day. Um, unfortunately, we didn't, didn't see him. Um, mm -hmm. 
But um, we had about eight people in the back just to, with binoculars. We all what sort of aircraft are you using? Uh, in, in the King Air 100. The King so it's a 10-seater, you can have two crew and eight people in the back. Mm -hmm. So we had eight people in the back, all with binoculars, and we're flying low level, mm -hmm. um, 500 feet, which is the minimum altitude you can fly above the sea. And we did flew up and down, up and mm -hmm. down. We flew like a grid. So we flew up yeah. and down, up and down. Uh, for about four hours and uh, yeah, I mean it's like a needle in a haystack unfortunately yeah, yeah, and the, yeah. the ocean is massive mm, mm. He wasn't wearing a life raft oh, shame um, so, yeah. Yeah, was, but, but 12 hours, I mean you can be the fittest man in the world and, mm, mm, mm. Um, we're, it was, We were looking for, for the family yeah, so Okay, was, so We had these interesting stories, but just so that everybody knows that it's most yeah. of the time Everything's calm. Everything's working. Yeah. I mean the When you land your plane as a, as a PPL or as an instructor do you have to fix it if something goes wrong? <laughs> do you, um, do you, no, yeah. no. Luckily, we don't. Yeah. Um, but and so being a pilot, you must have insurance. It's just, uh, I mean, if something goes wrong and it's your fault, mm -hmm. uh, it's good to have insurance. Otherwise, uh, it's going to be. I presume you have to have insurance. You have to have yeah. insurance, yeah. Um, especially if you're a student and that you have to have mm -hmm. insurance. If something does happen, which it, it hasn't. I mean, mm -hmm. we've been for six years of flying. I haven't seen anything really happen. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, now planes, you know, got destroyed or mm -hmm. anything or damaged. Um, but yeah, you have to have insurance. And then talking about the maintenance, so it's, you've got your AMO, which is your Aviation Maintenance Organization, mm -hmm. uh, and they do all the maintenance every 100 hours of flying time or every year. The plane has to okay. go for uh, certain uh, checks yeah. uh, and then potentially get overhauls every 1,000 hours for engines or 2,000 hours for propellers, etc. Yeah, normal normal and normal servicing. And that's the same course. with helicopters as well. Yes. So, so yeah. we can rest assured what we're flying is safe, especially from a commercial point of view. Correct. Yeah, it's, 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 in, it's incredibly safe. So then you, you fly for the airlines and then everybody wants to become a captain. How, how, I mean, how long does that take, you become uh, a captain? I've heard it, it takes quite a, a long time. Um, you could be in the airlines for two years and then you show you proficient and then they might put you into the captain seat. Mm -hmm. It could take seven years for okay. some people. It all depends. On your personality, your mindset, mm, mm. your knowledge, your um, kind of your yeah, your decision making and skills, requires. and, and mm. what the the company requires. Yeah. Mm. So, so there's a of, there's a there's a lot to there's, learn. There's, there's a, a lot, lot to, to do. To learn, I, yes. I I remember when I got my pilot's license, I was terrible at nav. I got <laughs> I got completely <laughs> lost. I got completely <laughs> lost at nav. And, but then you learn and you grow and you develop as a human yes. being, which was part of the reason you know about like I said, being the man in the arena. If you are Driving past a flight school, stop. God, Chat yeah. to the instructors. Every it's, such, it's such a advice, yeah. friendly community, you know. It's very. It's also a very uh, small community. Mm. I mean, you you have a friend that knows another pilot, and mm. we're actually a very small community. Mm. Mm. I mean, you can imagine, Close there's not a lot of yeah. pilots. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. If you do something wrong or illegal, someone will we'll somebody find will you. Know. <laughs> yeah. 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 So the, the the idea is, if kids are watching this, if parents are watching this. Um, the world is your oyster. Go out and see it. It's not always university. It's not always Technicon. It's not always starting a, your small business. It's that's all great. But if you have a passion for aviation, correct, because it's really driven by passion. It's, it's a lot of people think they they go into aviation. Oh no, I want to travel the world. I want to earn a lot of money. It's mm. not that case. For it is eventually. Yes, but yeah. I mean that will take you maybe ten years. Yeah, it could take yeah. you five years. Mm, it's, mm. It's, but passion will get you through into aviation. Yeah. And, and you have to have because you're paying so much money for your career for the study. Mm. Yeah. To be throwing it away, it just doesn't do it justice. No, no. So in so order to do it, correct. I would yeah, say. So sometimes when we have students that join us, I kind of ask them questions. Why, did you, why mm. are you, you getting into flying? Not to scare them away, just to make, make sure they're mm. not making the, the you incorrect, know, incorrect choice, choices yeah. and mm. decisions. Mm. Um, mm. You know. So I've, I've seen one or two students that actually have done it for the wrong reasons. And um, if they did start, it's, it's not for the correct cause. I mean, okay. you're not going to... You have to you struggle learning, motiv yeah. having motivation yeah. to learn for the exams, uh, to pay that money, to to work every day yeah. towards yeah. Yeah. your goals. And it dreams, has to be know? a passion. Yeah. yeah, so we're all, we're all aviators here. We all fly, and it really is a case of you have to be passionate to get involved. Otherwise, yeah. it's 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 going to come across in your work ethic, in your yes. diligence, in your in your flying. In your flying. Yeah. You, you know, you, this is not a career that you can choose lightly, but it is an incredibly rewarding career to become a pilot. And right. the world is really, really your oyster. So, Lauren, any final words from you to any aspirant young ladies out there that want to become a helicopter pilot and have bullets flying past them? <laughs> Just do it. If that's what you feel, mm. go ahead, do it. The government does provide funding mm -hmm. for it. So, 
get in touch, apply, apply, and have fun in doing yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Dylan, from yourself, you're a practicing instructor. Yes, yeah. So a good pilot is always learning. I'm mm. always learning every day as well as a pilot. So if you, you go for an entry flight and you, you feel that passion and you feel that spark, go mm. and do mm. it and get mm. it done. And uh, Make a plan to get it done, yeah. yeah but yeah. a good pilot is always learning. Yeah, and uh, the point is, it's not an easy road. No, no, it's, it's, no it's, it's not Top Gun. Bunch. It's not Top Gun. It's not Top Gun. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go, folks. So we've had Dylan, Lauren, helicopter pilot, fixed-wing pilots at the top of their game. They love what they do. Wherever you are in the world, if you see a flight school and you want to learn, go and speak to them. Maybe, maybe it doesn't work out. Maybe sometimes the fantasy is better than the Correct. reality. Yeah. But at least go out there and try. Be the man in the arena. Be the woman in the arena, and whatever you do, be safe and enjoy it. Have a great one.